Welcome everyone to the Knitting by the Sea podcast. My name is Lisa and I am Saratoga Knitting on Instagram and on Ravelry and I welcome you to my home. I live in Marblehead, Massachusetts, which is just about 20 minutes north of Boston and I am very lucky to live in a very old house here down by, uh, down by the harbor. Well, thanks for joining me today. It's been a while, so I have some things to show you. Um, first, we'll do some finished objects, then we'll do works in progress, and then we'll do some spinning, and I'll talk a little bit about some plans that I have, and then we'll do some chatter at the end. So let's get started. Finished objects. Well, of course, I am wearing the first one that I have to show you today. And this is the Winter Soul Sweater by Jennifer Steingast. And you know, if you've watched me before, you know that I love her patterns. Um, this is a, I think this is an older pattern of hers, but it um, begins here and it goes up. So you knit the yoke up and so then you have the, the, um, the armholes here. And you finish off the, the neckline and then you pick up all of the stitches and just knit the body down and knit the two arms down and I really enjoy that type of sweater knitting. Uh, I know her newer patterns aren't like that but I really enjoy this and and uh, I had some great yarn available to me. I used Knit Picks Wool of the Andes for this lovely dark gray and for the lighter uh, color, the lighter white and lighter. It's almost, a, it's almost a, just a light gray here and I really liked that. The contrast colors which I used on the cuffs here and then on the collar and then for the the decoration uh, the contrast decoration here is hand spun and this is hand spun merino from uh, Little Bean Loves um, Loves Yarn uh, and that is Kayleen and she lives here in Marblehead she's one of my favorite dyers so she dyes yarn and she also dyes fiber and I really love getting the fiber from her this was so much fun it was a beautiful beautiful mix of dark almost black and blues and then there are some greens but what was nice about that, it gives it some really nice contrast as you're, as you're knitting because the hand spun is just changing changing color. So it just gives it some, some interest. And I think you, you might be able to see here on the, the cuffs, I don't know how the light is for it, but the cuffs are um, can be just a little bit different. See, that's a little bit lighter on that, that side than on this side. But that's just because the hand, the hand spun was coming along. This is much more green. It has some teal in it. And this side has more of a, more of a purpley kind of mauve uh, colors, which I just, I, just, I just love. I think this was just great. It also has a little bit of, um, a little bit of the pattern on the, on the bottom as, as well. But this is just one of my favorite types of sweaters. Um, I've already, already worn it quite a bit now. I just love to throw something like this on over a turtleneck because it just it's just a really interesting and people just love to love to see it and, and love to, to comment um, on it and you have so much fun doing the interesting part first this way and then you just have all of this stock lovely stockinette to go um, on the bottom and then the, the the two arms the arms are actually nice because you, this is all just stockinette you've got some decreases to do but then you go back to some interest because you've got a little bit of patterning on the on the cuff um, on the cuff on each one too. So I really, really like this. This came out perfectly. The sizing was perfect on it. I really, really enjoyed it. This is going to be obviously one of my go-to sweaters for this winter, but then again for, for next winter, I just see just throwing this on the side and, and, and just picking it up on the days that I have to travel in uh, into work. I'm really, really happy, um, happy with this. As you know, I have knit other Jennifer Steingast patterns and I really like her patterns uh, quite, quite a bit. Um, it's just they're just favorite and they fit me well so I think that's something important if you find a designer that you like their patterns and the patterns actually fit you well then stick with it um, I really I really find that I have a very few um, sweater uh, writers sweater patterns that I really like so uh, designers I should say um, Jennifer Stein guess is one uh, certainly um, Kate Davies is, an, is another one then and, and just the the designs fit me really well without having to finagle too too much um, on the on the patterning, um, as long as I get my gauge <laughs> correct, then I'm I'm really good good to go. Very very happy. I'm very happy with this. Um, and then I also my second finished object. I only have two to show you. I probably I did more um, over Christmas. I gave away some hats and 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 things, but um, I'll I'll talk a little bit more about that in a, a little bit later. Um, my second finished object is actually a test knit, and I really liked I really liked these. I did these in about two weeks. I think I did one one sock per per week, and these are for Emma Barnaby of the Tiny Desk Knitting Podcast, 
and she is, she, I've spoken about her before. She's a crazy great Fair Isle knitter. She knits all the time. She's got unbelievably beautiful Fair Isle uh, and Nordic Nordic mittens and um, and uh, socks and uh, just all kinds of things. She just she is just a prolific knitter, and she really is amazing. And if you're interested in Fair Isle knitting or getting into the really the nitty gritty of Fair Isle and choosing colors, she'd be a great one to uh, to take a look at because she just gives everyone so so much information um, um, information about it. She is originally from Ver Vermont and. Um, she, her mom, and a friend of mine who lives in Vermont are friends. So that's how I know. Uh, that's how I know. Um, I know about Emma. I have never met her, but um, but I kind of, you know, we have some some um, some folks in in common there. So this is the pair of socks. I actually have two of them, <laughs> and they're super pretty. This is just a beautiful, beautiful lace pattern all the way up, um, all the way up the foot. Sometimes I will do the lace pattern only on the front, but since this was a test knit, I decided to do it all the way around. She was really generous on this test knit. You could do whatever you wanted, really. She really just needed some test knitting, basically, of the of the lace pattern. But I decided to go ahead and follow the, her pattern anyway. Very different for me because this is a pair of socks that are knit cuff down with a heel flap and gusset. So uh, this is not what I usually do. I normally do toe up. And... Um, I enjoyed it. I, I I'm not a I'm not a big fan of it simply because I find the the cuff part kind of fiddly. Now other people will say starting a uh, starting a sock toe up is is fiddly, and it is, but it seems to be just fiddly for a shorter period of time for me than than doing it uh, cuff down. Although either works fine. This work this these fit perfectly on my feet. I'm just really happy with them. This is some really pretty uh, legacy fiber arts yarn that I picked up in a sale that they were having recently and it's steel toes and I don't have a name of it I think this was a one of a one of a kind uh, that was up in a sale <clears throat> so I picked it it was really pretty I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it I figured I would make a pair of socks but um, this is these are these are perfect for for this and you know as you wear them the, and when I wear them the the lace pattern will stretch out more but it's really just a simple lace pattern I think it's I think it's an eight row repeat it, as Emma would say you can't really memorize it but it's it's easy enough and, and quick enough um, to 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 do it, and it really just came out beautifully. And everything in the everything in the pattern worked perfectly. I didn't find any mistakes in that, so that's really uh, that's really that's really good. And I look forward to it. She is doing. I think she's looking at designing a pair of socks each month for the next twelve months. I think that's what she said she was going to do, and it's going to have a Jane Austen kind of a theme. So these are called the Jane Bennett socks. And I, I, I don't know what the next ones are going to be called, but um, but uh, they will they will have some reference to Jane Austen or one of Jane Austen's books or, or characters as well. But this was actually really fun, and I haven't done a test knit of a sock in a while, so I thought this was really great, and it um, it was it was perfect. Works in progress. I do have a few to show you today. The first one that I have is called the Fake Howl, and this is also by Emma Barnaby of Tiny Desk Knitting. And I've been working on this for a while, so you've seen this before, but I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I'm really enjoying it. So this is the cowl here, and it started with a provisional cast on on the bottom. That's this funny orange yarn here. And um, then what will happen is that there's two sections, as you can see, this first section and then the sec second section. The second section will be folded inside. So it will be folded in. So it's a double, um, double thickness cowl. And then this top, when I finish it, will be grafted together on the bottom. So it will be a double thickness, and it will be really, really lovely. And what I have been using with this is uh, the Jameson and Smith background color here so this is just the gray and the contrasting color is just one skein of yarn and is this lovely skein here I'm going to pull I'm going to pull this out here so you you can see it has all kinds of different colors in it so it's doing the work for me so I am not changing any colors I'm not uh, I'm just using the two but it's giving a really interesting texture to to this cowl because the colors are completely different. There's dark blues, there's there's uh, mauve, there's purple, and I am just loving loving it. It just changes as as you go each 
uh, each each row that I do is a very very different. I'm, and I'm like I said, I am almost done with this. This is just something that I pick up and I'll do a, a couple of repeats. Um, these are they're it's charted and it's um it's a it's a free pattern on Ravelry, so you can go and take a, a look at this. But it's just beautiful, and I am so looking forward to this. I'm not sure by the time I finish this, it'll probably be too warm to warm too warm to wear, but. It's going to be beautiful when it's when it's done, and I really am looking forward to it. And I have so enjoyed this. I have lots of I just have um, I just have markers here, so I know where I am in each of the in each of the repeats. But it's a really easy uh, project. I know color work and Fair Isle color work. It, a lot of people don't think that it's easy, but I really in, enjoy it a lot, and I am just having a blast doing this. And I think it's really going to be very gorgeous and elegant when it is done. So again, that's the Fay Cowl by uh, Emma Barnaby. So I've been working on that. Hopefully that will be done fairly soon. We'll see. <laughs> and uh, if I don't get distracted, that is, with other, other projects. And let's see, I have another pair of socks on the go as well. And these um, I started, I actually started as my Christmas Eve cast on. <laughs> gotten very, very far. I've been, I get distracted. But that's okay. They'll be done by next Christmas. No, they'll be done quicker, quicker than that. But these are called the Festive Candy Cane Socks, and they are by Sally Jane Designs. And um, Sally Jane is originally from South Africa, and she now lives in England. And she is great. I really, I really love her. She's been putting out some some little uh, TikToks or um, stories on Instagram that have some just some knitting tips. So they're really fun to really fun to to see. And these are just beautiful. This yarn. That I have is from Three Irish Girls that I and I picked this up at my uh, local yarn shop, Marblehead Knits, specifically for a Christmas Eve cast on. I said I wanted to go and get something, and so this was very obviously a very festive berry color, and I really like it. And it is a kind of a twisted, twisted rib going all the way up on each of these socks. Super simple to do. It really is not. It really is not difficult um, at all, and it is not a cable. It is. Uh, it looks like a cable, but it's it's not, and it is just. It's just beautiful. These I'm doing the way I like to do them. I'm doing them toe up, and I'm doing uh, the fish lips kiss heel again, which I really like slip stitch heel, um, <clears throat> which really fits me well. And as I said, I I don't find this as fiddly, so I really enjoy. I'm really enjoying this. I'm not on the bus as much anymore because I'm still only going into into Boston two days a week. So that's that's actually probably why these haven't been haven't been picked up as much. I just, I don't have any deadline on these. As I said, they were just my Christmas Eve cast on socks and then I'm just kind of picking them up as I go if I need something in between or if I'm, uh, you know, going in on uh, on the bus. So really beautiful pattern and I'm really enjoying, enjoying these and I'm enjoying the, enjoying the yarn as, um, as well. Let's see, what else? My third work in progress, and I think I showed you the yarn from this before. <clears throat> I don't think I had started this the last time I podcast. And um, a ways back, was it in October or November? It hadn't snowed yet, so maybe it was November. The New England Fiber Fest uh, took place out in Springfield, Massachusetts, and Sophia and um, I and uh, Tracy and her niece uh, and our friend Sarah came along, and we went to that. It was our first fiber festival in, well, since 2019. <laughs> I can't even believe it's been that long. But uh, we had a great time there. It was really fun. We saw some people we knew, and it was just so—it's just so enjoyable to go and 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 just be with other um, crafters and, and yarn lovers. It was really a nice a nice way back into um, into things. And I picked up some beautiful, beautiful yarn. I got to see Carol from Foster Sheep Farm, which used to be my local yarn shop. And uh, I picked up some gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous hand dyed. I'm pretty sure. Let's see that this is. Yeah, this is Romney, Wensleydale, and, and Coriadale, and it is a plant dyed, so it is just this beautiful, beautiful color of bluish gray, which is fabulous. And this was the, the this was the skein that I picked up first. And I had an idea of what I wanted to do with this yarn, a pattern that I wanted to do, which I will show you. But it needed a it needed a fingering weight yarn and some type of a mohair yarn. So I picked this up, this beautiful fuzzy ball of wonder, and this is from 
dragonfly fibers. So they were there as well. And this is, uh, it's called Fairy, and it's 70% kid mohair and 30% silk. Beautiful. Just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful to work with. So combined, it has this beautiful color, and this just adds a little contrast and some absolutely lovely uh, halo to it. And it's just so soft, so soft. So <clears throat> the project that I am doing is called the Satellite Cowl, and that is by Meg Gadsby. And uh, Meg is a designer out of Australia, I believe. And I've knit several of her projects before. I really enjoy them. They're really well, very well written, and I um, really enjoy them. So you can see it's just at the it's just the start. I'll put a picture in here though, but it's just the start of this. And <clears throat> this is just a rib, and then it, um, a little bit of a um, uh, just a little bit of a. Uh, oh, I think I have it. I do. I have it inside out. So here's the rib, and then there's some stockinette, and then there'll be some other, um, just some really simple uh, texture patterning in this, and it will just be beautiful, and it is meant to be used, it's meant to use a really soft, uh, soft yarn, and I think that the combination that I've chosen, I'm really loving it. You can actually see I had to, I, uh, I wasn't paying attention and made mistakes, so I had to rip back a few rows, but you can see it, I, ha I, just, I just pulled it out, you can see it kind of um, balled up together. Uh, as as uh, as two and it really it's just a beautiful color and I'm really excited about doing this I haven't um, I haven't done a lot of knitting with any type of a mohair yarn and or you know holding a, um, holding some mohair with something else so I'm really pleased to to do this and I thought at first I was like oh no when I realized the mistake I had made I'm like oh do I have, can I can I you know, tink this back, and it really wasn't hard to do, and I'm sure it's because I'm holding it double with just a regular fingering weight, weight yarn. I think probably by itself it would be pretty difficult to to kind of tink back, but when I have, since I have them together, it really wasn't, it wasn't difficult. There wasn't any pulling or, or sticking or anything like that, so I was pretty pleased with that. So I'm very happy with this. I'm really, I'm really just, I, I, I will take my time with this because I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying doing, um, doing this right now so I'm very, very happy and again just has special memories because it was it was our first fiber fest since 2019 so that was really lovely now I'm doing something completely different I don't think you've ever seen me do that you ne have never seen me do this because I haven't done this in in forever um, I did quite a bit of uh, counted cross stitch when I was a youngster um, when my eyesight was better and I, um, I did a lot of samplers. That was really my pretty much my go-to craft. I didn't do a lot of knitting. I did crocheting and I did counted cross stitch and I really I enjoyed the counted cross stitch and I just loved putting the colors together and the different samplers that I did. So I have, I have several, I did do several of them. I have, we have one hanging, um, hanging up in our hallway here. And you know, every time I walk by it, I'm like, oh, you know, knitting kind of took over at some point in time and then <laughs> and then as we get older, our eyesight deteriorates a little bit, and it was just harder for me to uh, to do unless I was under a really bright light. And a lot of times I like to do, I would, I, you know, I'll do my crafting in the evening. So it wasn't ideal. I just found myself like straining quite a bit. Um, and I, I know I could have magnifying and I could have a special light. And But, you know, I'm just kind of doing it while we're all watching watching TV together. So I kind of I kind of let, let that go, and, um, and I just went pull in on into the knitting, which is perfectly fine as well. But I've been thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it. There's so many beautiful cross stitch patterns out there. And one of the websites that I really like to look at is called, um, it is, oh, I gotta write, look, at, look at it here. It is called Long Dog Samplers. And if you have a few minutes, go and look at the website. I'll put it down here. I think it's just longdogsamplers.com. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful samplers. And they are big which I really like. Again, it's like getting into a big sweater project. Um, I figured if I'm going to start something, I'd really like to just just dive into it and do a, a really good a good project. And the long dog samplers are very, very large. And um, what you get when you when you do it, you get a, uh, a PDF download. And then basically I take that PDF download and I just load it into Knit Companion on, um, on my iPad. And then I have all the pages for all the pieces of the of the project um, in 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 line. Um, let's see if I can I'll see if I can pull it up. I'm going to show you too. So this was what I asked for. I asked for this for Christmas. So Sophia was able to find it <laughs> and she downloaded it. And there's one particular one, and I'll show you why this was the one that I um, 
this was the one that I wanted. Let me see if I can get to this. I'll see if, you, see if you can see this picture. This is the sampler. And you can see that it is all Egypt. So that is what it's really, really drew me to, to this. The other thing about long dog samplers is that most of them are just done in one color. So you have just one color. Now there are people, I've seen videos of people going into this and they, they start at one corner and they do a, um, you know, they, they do a fade of colors all the way up to the other corner. I'm, I'm not quite there yet. I'm just going to be doing the one color. But, you know, I, I came across this on the website and it was a fairly new one. And I was like, all right, that's, you know, that's, that's kismet. Um, we need to, I need to get that and, and do that. Um, since now, <laughs> since we've been to Egypt now. So that was really amazing. And so I have this hole in a project. I had to get a, a, a hoop and they, um, Sophie and Mark got me a whole package of a whole uh, project, which has all kinds of, um, all kinds of DMC, uh, thread in it. It has, um, any kind of, um, any kind of thing that you would need to do embroidery. It was really, it was really kind of fun. So this is how far I am right now. So this is the very bottom corner. <laughs> My poor husband is like, you are never going to finish that. So it, it, oops, wrong way. It will be this big, <laughs> but I'm only down here right, right now. <laughs> but this has been a blast. I have been so excited to, to do this again. Um, I will admit that most of the time I work on this, maybe on Saturday afternoons, if Mark has his guitar lesson, I will come up here because the light in here is really good in the afternoon. And I'll just, you know, put on a, put on a, um, uh, an audio book and just sit and, and work on this. And now the other good thing is that I don't need to change colors. <laughs> so that makes it a little bit easier. But I, you do still have to count and you need to be able to see the squares and where you're putting your needle and, and how you're doing, uh, how you're doing the crossovers, uh, et cetera. And, um, it's, it's really been a lot of fun for me to get back into this. And again, this is going to be like my Christmas Eve cast on socks. This will be a long time before it's done. So it was very good value for the money as a, as a Christmas present. But I was really excited because it was one of the things that I, that I did ask for. Um, so, you know, the progress on that will be slow, slow and steady. But I will show it to you as I, as I go. And it's just, it's great. Because every time I pick it up, I think about Egypt and our, and our trip. So that's really just you know, really um, solidifying all those memories for me uh, as well. So that was a lot of fun. So those are pretty much what I've been working on right now. So let's go on to some... Spinning. I have done some spinning and I'm really happy to be getting back to that. I should get back to it. I shouldn't say get back to it. I always I always feel like I'm not doing it and then I'll do it for a big spurt and then I'll kind of let it go for a little bit and then I'll get back to it. But it's just one of those things. I Once I realize it, I'm like, oh, I need to get, get back uh, into that and, and do, do some more. But I, I really do do it on a fairly, regu fairly regular basis. Um, so right now, Carrie of the My Will Mitten podcast is doing a spin for socks, which is really fun. It was just a nice thing. She kind of came on and said, I'm going to try to, you know, spin some, some, uh, some wool for, uh, some socks so I can knit socks out of hand spun. I actually, I haven't done that in a long, long time. Years ago, I was part of a fiber club and, uh, when I first started spinning and I remember getting some beautiful yarn and I, <clears throat> and I would, I spun it, but I spun it fairly thickly. So the, the yarn was really decay or, or worsted when, and then when I went to knit the socks up, they were really kind of ended up being like winter boot socks, um, because they were just kind of thick. So I haven't really, I haven't really gone back and revisited spinning sock yarn, uh, at all. But as the years have gone by, my spin, you know, when I, my go-to spinning really has been, um, the fiber, uh, the yarn that's produced has been thinner and thinner. So I'm like, you know what, I'm going to try that. I have some, I do have some, some yarn that I can use for that. And, and, you know, Carrie's idea was just pick something out that you, that you have, or you've been thinking about spinning. doesn't really matter what the, you know, what, what uh, type of fiber it is, whatever kind of makes you happy. Do, uh, you could do a sampling, you know, do, <clears throat> make it, a, make it a striped, um, sock with different yarns that you, that different yarns that you've uh, created from different fibers, um, take, take one, combine some different things. So it really was quite open and I'm like, that's just a really nice idea to start the year. So <clears throat> I thought I would do that. And I have, um, I have 
some beautiful um, Romney from Foster Sheep Farm that I've been spinning up. And you can see it here. All spun up. This is really beautiful. Super soft, just lovely. I have quite a bit of this. I'm sure I have enough to make a sweater. Um, I'm, I haven't even made a dent in the <clears throat> in the bag of, uh, of fluff, so to speak. So I'm very happy with that. And then I had some random green and white, and I think this this has got to have some silk in it. I think it's merino and a little bit of silk in it as well. I think. I don't know. I think this I got this in a swap, but this is what it is here. And I didn't really have enough of this to do anything specific with, so I've kind of it's just been, you know, hanging in my bag. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to try to knit that up. And I'm going to see what that looks like along with um, along with this. So you can see it here. I mean, this it's not quite as neon as it looks on the screen, but it's not something that I normally would think about putting together, but I'm like, what the heck? I'm going to I'm going to give this a give this a try. So I spun I'm spinning this. I'm almost done with that. <clears throat> spinning this up. And so this is how it comes out on the wheel. Really pretty, just a really nice gradient of different uh, greens in here. Really super pretty, like very sea greenish. It's really very lovely. At first I thought I might try to combine the fiber together and spin it together. And that didn't come out so great because this is kind of a stickier fiber and this is slippery. So it wouldn't, they, they really didn't blend that well. I could, if I had a you know, if I, I had a blending board or something, I could have done I could have done that, but I, I don't. And so I basically thought, you know what, I'm not going to fight this. I'm just going to just spin them separately and see how they come out. And so that's what I did. And then when I applied them together, they came out into this really pretty, pretty yarn. It's pretty squishy and fluffy. I don't know how much I have. I forget. I, I did measure it, but I forget what it, what it was. I'm going to do these socks toe up. I might do a contrasting color for the for the toes and the heels, just so I have enough. Um, I'll kind of think about that. I'm probably going to start these maybe today at some at some point. I have some black, leftover black I might do for the toes and the heel in this, just so I have enough um, to at least get a little bit up the up the leg. I probably don't have a I probably don't have enough to get all the way up all the way up the leg, but we'll see. Maybe I will if I have used the contrasting color in that. But I was really pleased with this. And this is not something that I w you know, would have thought of doing um, other than the fact that, that Carrie had that little push in, in doing it. I'm really pleased with, with this. I think the spinning part of her spin along is kind of over now. And so people are starting to knit, um, knit up their socks. So I mean, I still have the spinning to finish for the second sock, but I do have enough here to start my first one. And so I'm going to probably do that, do that and cast that on today since I finished the other test socks uh, for Emma. But I'm really happy with this. I'm going to be really be curious to see how it comes out. Um, these are not going to be these are not going to be hard wearing socks at all. But you know, I am not really hard on my socks. I have so many. <laughs> I should count them up. I I you know I've been knitting socks for years and years and years, and so when they wear out, I just throw them away. I, sacrilege, I know, but I just I just toss them if they get felted or something in the dryer for some reason, or if there's a hole in them. I am just not one to to try to spend a lot of time to save them. If they're at that point, they've had a long and good life and they've given me a lot of joy and it's time to say goodbye. So I usually just will toss them if they wear out. But I have, I literally have a drawer full of hand knit socks. So there's, and there's nobody else. Mark will not wear hand knit socks. And um, Sophia does, but she, you know, she has her own hand knit, hand knit socks. And so I just, you know, when I buy random skeins of fingering weight yarn, I will most likely make socks out of them, and uh, I love it. And so I have a ton of them. So I'm not, I, you know, these would be in a rotation. I might wear them once a month, so it really, it really, it doesn't, it doesn't have to. There's no nylon or anything in this, so um, they're not necessarily going to be hard wearing. But I'm not hard on my socks anyway. So I'm really looking forward to to um to casting these on. So you have to see, I'll, I'm sure I'll post a picture up on Instagram of them as I, as I get going. So I'll be really happy, happy to try this, happy to get that going. The other fiber that I've been spinning is this really beautiful orange. It's crazy. I have two bobbins of this. It's just beautiful. This is fiber from Kayleen, a uh, little bean loves yarn once again here in Marblehead. And I got this and I really love it. And what I, I wasn't sure. I'm like, I don't, Again, I don't have, there's not enough to make a sweater or anything, so I wasn't sure what to do with this. I'm like, you know, I can always use it as, as, a, as a contrast color in a sweater. But I'm actually thinking 
that I might just ply these together because it's a little bit thicker and I'm probably going to I'll at least get a uh, worsted and probably be <clears throat> closer to a light chunky weight yarn if I ply these together and maybe I will make a hat. I know Kay of the Bakery Bears just finished this really cool uh, cable hat that she's done for herself before but she did another one. I think she's in the process of writing up that pattern and that might be out sometime I think maybe in March so I'm looking forward to that. Now just as I was watching her show us this hat on her last on their last uh, podcast episode, I was like, you know, that orange yarn downstairs might be just perfect for that. So a big chunky cabley hat with a big puff on the top of it, I think um, I think that will be really fun. So that's probably what's going to happen with this. I have a little bit more of the orange to spin as well, and then I'm going to, I think I'm going to um, ply it together to make a larger, bulkier yarn. So we'll see. Keep you posted on that. And then I also... <laughs> I also indulged and I purchased some more beautiful merino from a merino blend from um, from Kayleen and it's just oh my gosh it's so pretty oh, a couple of these little things I didn't see in here um, she sent me some a couple of fun little fun little stickers in the in the bag as, as well and it is gorgeous and I actually got eight ounces of this so I have a good a good chunk of this again I, I don't know what I will do with this but I'm just looking forward to it and isn't this beautiful oh it is black and it is dark purple and it is a lighter blue and it's a light purple it is just gorgeous gorgeous so as I said I have two I have eight ounces of this and I'm really excited about um, about getting that on the uh, on the wheel as as well. Mm -mm -mm. This will be that will be very very nice. Oops, I should put these back in there um, so I don't lose them. But yeah, I just have enjoyed getting back and you know thank you Carrie for kind of getting uh, getting that little bit of a push underneath me to try something to try something different um, with the with the spinning. So now let me talk a little bit about some upcoming. Um, knitting plans that I have. Upcoming knitting plans. I have a few. Um, I don't have yarn for any of these <laughs> yet, but I am dreaming about it. I'm thinking about it. The first one is a beautiful um, uh, pattern by Kate Davies, and it is called uh, Sarkle. And it is a uh, top-down sweater. I'll put a picture up here as well so you can you can see it. It is knit in DK weight, and it is a uh, her description is, is it says it is a cozy pullover with an elegant pattern of twisted stitches worked around the yoke. In old Scots, a circle is a circular fence or boundary, and it is beautiful, just gorgeous. I really like it a lot. I don't have a, a color in mind yet, but obviously it probably will be a lighter one because that way you'll see the beautiful. The beautiful design. I haven't done a, I haven't done an all over one color uh, sweater in a while, so that will be fun, uh, fun to do when I get when I get to it. So that I'm really looking forward to it. As I mentioned earlier, Kate Davies patterns really fit me well, uh, and I don't have to do too um, too too much too many changes to them to get them perfect. So I really. I really like I like her aesthetic. Uh, I just like her designs. They fit really well. This pattern I don't have the name of it, but it also comes in a uh, it also comes in a cardigan. You can look it up on Ravelry. It comes in a cardigan uh, form as well. But as I've said before, I'm not really a big cardigan person. I really just like pullovers um, to wear on top of turtlenecks. And so I will be I would be doing this pattern, which is um, which is a, a pullover. Um, the second pattern that I'm looking at which I'm sure everyone is looking at. I know that um, my sister-in-law Tracy and I are both like kind of drooling uh, drooling over it. And that is the brand new, or one of the new patterns by Jennifer Steingast called Avena. Avena. And this is just beautiful. And this pattern I actually purchased and I have it waiting. <laughs> um, it's a circular yoke sweater um, with a surprising twist with diagonal collar work cascading down the neckline so it kind of comes over like this but as you can see in the picture and I've just been I just spent a, a few minutes yesterday actually looking at the different the different um, color combinations that people have have been choosing and it really is all over um, just all over I mean you could have a dark color and a light color for the the uh, the color work you could have a, a light color and the dark color for the color work 
and I am thinking that I probably um, will be, I probably would end up going with maybe a lighter, a light kind of a gray color, uh, which is really just good in the winter time here because this would be a winter, winter sweater for me. Um, kind of a gray, a light gray color, and then have the 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 color work being a darker color. So maybe a really dark green, a dark purple, um, you know, a dark um, a dark brown. I'm not I'm not sure yet, but a problem. I'm thinking that that's what I'll do with a lighter body and the darker um, the darker contrasting uh, color. I think would be really really very nice. I that would that would kind of be where I th I think my my uh, color sense is going on that. And then the third, the third project is going to be just a really fun, fun little project, I think. And um, this is called the uh, Arthur sweater. I'm going to pull it up for myself here. And I will put a picture up for you as well. And it's actually a little vest. Um, and it is by uh, Lisa Chemery, who is a Fragonet. Uh, knitting patterns, and she's frogging it on, uh, on on Instagram. She mostly designs, I believe she lives in Germany, she mostly designs um, knitwear for children, so they're really, really, really cute. And this is a really sweet color work vest. Um, can be for a boy or a girl, uh, really doesn't, it doesn't matter, and it is just so cute, and it's part of her Poirot con collection, so that actually, you know, is nice as well, Has gives me that nice, nice um, Egyptian feeling again. Um, but this is actually called, it is, um, it, she said, she's named it after Cap, Captain Arthur Hastings, who is Poirot's loyal friend and accompany, accompanies him on many of his cases. He has a genius for stating the obvious, and his scrupulous and romantic nature make him a very likable character. I always like Captain Hastings um, on the Poirot series. So this is, um, this is named after, um, after Captain Hastings. But this is going to be for, uh, for Sophia's and, and my friend as well, Megan, um, and her husband. They, um, they just had their baby last week, so that was really, really cute. They had a little boy, and, you know, I had done a baby surprise jacket for her in a blanket, which I've shown here before, and... Um, those went over very well. I knew they would. I knew they would. Her mom was a knitter and a, a spitter and unfortunately isn't with us anymore. Um, so um, I suspect I will be doing more sweaters as uh, as, as this little guy uh, gets older. But So I thought this would be a really nice thing to do. Um, fairly easy, um, small collar work patterning. I, again, I don't have the yarn for, um, for this. I'm thinking about the different colors that I might like to use for it. And I'll probably make the size for a one-year-old because by the time I get it, um, you know, it will be, uh, it'll be, uh, it'll be time for, um, it'll be easy for him to wear because it'll, it would be by the time he's won. Yeah, it would be next winter. So it'd be perfect for, um, for late winter, early spring. Um, so that's what I'm thinking and that's what I'm, I'm looking forward to. And again, it won't take a lot of yarn. I probably could just go through and use some scraps on it as, um, as well, but I do want to make sure that it's washable. So I probably will just purchase some superwash, um, yarn, um, for, uh, for this. But those are the three patterns that I'm looking to start at some time in the near future. Probably the little pullover here will be the first one that that I uh, that I that I really look at, and I can't decide between <laughs> Verstein Guest and Kate Davies. It's a it's a tough one. It's a tough one. But I feel um, you know I don't have a sweater on the go now that I'm done with, done with this, and I, I seem to always have a sweater on the go. So. I really get I get antsy um, about getting a new one uh, on the needles, but we'll see. You'll have to see what what choice what choice I make in the in the future. So that's what I'm looking at. So now let's move on to some chatter. So what's been happening? Um, let's let's see. I haven't spoke to you in a while. So we had a um, we had a really lovely Christmas um, season. It was very very nice. Um, just nice and quiet and um, relaxed. We had um, Christmas Eve here at our house. We try to do that and try to separate that out. And then Christmas dinner, we actually uh, cooked over at um, my in-laws' uh, house. So that was kind of that was kind of nice um, to do this year. Uh, it was quiet. We have a week off. I have a week off between Christmas and New Year's, and that was that was really um, very very relaxing time for me. It was actually great because I actually got to start my cross stitch and, and I was really working on this sweater quite a bit. So that was really, um, lots of, lots of fun. I really tried to make sure that I did lots of knitting and 
and just crafting uh, during that during that week that I that I had off. I really I really really needed it. Um, we are very very busy at work, which is really why I've kind of been away from social media a, a little bit. I think I had spoken about this before, but we are in a situation where we have um, we have about um, we actually have an office of, that's really eight or potentially nine positions. And right now we have four uh, people, one of whom is the director. So she doesn't really have time to do the day-to-day work. So there really are three of us splitting up the work of, of everyone of everyone else. Um, you know, I think we, we went through a situation where, where everybody in this country, um, every office in this country, people are just leaving. Um, you know, people are leaving for other opportunities or just leaving to take some time off um, and finding something else to do, uh, just have some, you know, just, just uh, moving for growth. Uh, Etc. So we we have just had quite a few people in our office leave, and so we are in also in the process of interviewing for new new folks. It's been a bit of a while as well. So really, before the holidays, we didn't have any applicants for the positions, and now once the holidays were over, and then we started to get some some applicants, and we've gone through the interviewing process, and we actually have a couple of people that we are now in the process of offering the positions to, which will be really really nice, but. Um, because of that, I have been extremely, extremely busy. Um, I've had to take on several different programs that I, I have done in the past but haven't done um, recently and have been now I'm the only person doing them. Oh, you can see the kitty. <laughs> you can see the cat walking around in the, in the bottom. Um, so it really has been just very, very stressful. Um, so I'm just coming home at night and I'm just so, so tired. I'd be so tired. I There were some nights I just couldn't knit and I just, you know, eat dinner and just basically go go to sleep and get up the next the next morning. Very, 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 very busy. Um, I think as as busy as I've ever been at this at this position. Um, so uh, and, and the things that I was doing are very time sensitive. So they had to be done in, in time for um, for bills to to uh, to be paid. So it, it's been it's been rough. It definitely, I, I will not uh, I would not sugarcoat it and say that it hasn't been. It's been very rough, and I'm not the only person in this position. We, everybody in our office is doing, really doing yeoman's work to to kind of get through this period. But there's a light at the end of the tunnel now. So we're hoping that within the next few weeks or so, we're going to be able to bring some new people on. It will still be busy because we'll, there'll be training that needs to that needs to be happening and and transitioning over um, over work to to someone to someone new. So. You know, it'll be it'll be different, but it'll be nice to have other people. And it'll be really nice, I think, uh, having new energy in the office, new people in uh, in the office. I, I'm really I'm really just looking forward to um, I'm looking forward to it. We still are only going into the office two days a week, which is great for for me right now. So I only have to make that um, that commute twice, which which as I said, which is why I'm not getting a lot of work done on my my bus knitting. Um, because I'm only going in two days, two days a week, but that's actually really nice. We just have, and then we have, you know, we, we work, we each have laptops and we work from, uh, we work from home, uh, the other, the other days, which really has, has just worked out very, very well. I'm very, very happy with doing that. And I'm hoping we're going to be able to keep on doing that for, um, for the foreseeable future. There really isn't any need for us to go back full time unless the institution decides that that's what they want to do. But for right now, while COVID is, is still pretty pretty rampant, um, it's it's the way to go. We are tested twice a week. I know I've mentioned this before. We're tested twice a week. We have PCR testing. Um, actually, once a week, I'm sorry. Um, if you're vaccinated, you get a test once once a week. So um, so I know each week that I'm clear and don't have it, which, which is always, you know, which is a good, it's a good thing. Um, and we're still trying to be very careful. We all have the N95 masks now. So pretty much, pretty much every town in Massachusetts has an indoor mask mandate. So if I go to the grocery store, you have to wear your, you have to wear a mask inside anyway. If you go to a restaurant, you have to start out wearing a mask, and then you can take it off when you have, you know, when you're eating or or drinking. So it's been, it, you know, we're still kind of dealing, you know, dealing with um, dealing with with that. Um, still, I'm always very nervous about my in-laws because they're both. My father-in-law is 90, and my mother-in-law is close to 90. Uh, she'll be 90 next month, actually. Actually, so. You know they're um, they are uh, definitely potentially could be in serious trouble if they if they got it. But they're you know they're fully vaccinated and they're just they're doing the best they can. So I think I think we're all we're all basically just doing the best we can at, at this at this point at this point in time. Um, 
We have had some crazy weather. It has been warm and then rain, and we did have a blizzard there a few weeks back where we got probably close to two feet of snow in one day. So that was pretty. That was pretty crazy. Uh, it's always fun, and it was it was a nor'easter. So you hear about the nor'easter. So that's when the the wind is coming from the northeast. And our harbor here in Marblehead is situated northeast. So that means the winds come right down uh, the harbor and right into us. So basically, we had it was like a hurricane, but it, it with with um you know with um uh, with snow rather than rather than rain. So we had quite a bit. So that meant a couple of days of good shoveling going going on and trying to trying to get our cars um, out of uh, out of the mess um, and now it's it's this week is warm it's in the 40s and in the 50s this week so all that snow that we had has most of it has melted away um, so that's you know it's just kind of New England weather it is what it is it looks like we're gonna it, it should be fairly you know I think we're coming out of the deep 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 cold right now now anything can happen in March. But um, I think hopefully we're we're on the you know on the on the path to 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 getting back to spring, which will be really very very nice, really very very nice. Um, Sophia and I, well, Sophia has said that um, she has does not is not interested in seeing the new movie, The Death on the Nile. I'm sure everybody is aware that the the new movie is is coming out. I'm kind of torn. The movie looks like it's extremely stylized. And the boat um, is not the Sudan, you know. It's it's based on the Sudan, but it's all very very stylized. And and just the movie clips we can see, you know, you've seen so far, it, it looks nothing like the real, you know, the real Sudan. Um, and the shots of Egypt are very stylized. So I, Sophia's just, you know, I don't want to see it. I just I, I I you know I've had the experience on the boat itself, and I I don't I don't want to. I don't want to see it. I'm kind of torn. Like I said, I probably will see it. I'm not sure if I'll see it in the movie theaters. Maybe I'll wait. I don't know. I, I just have to make a decision. It's actually, I think, coming to our movie theater here this week. So I'll have to see see what I think. Maybe I can drag Mark to it. Um, it'll be fun just to see what they did, really, with uh, with Egypt. I'm assuming that they, I'm assuming that they filmed some of it there. I don't know, but I'm assuming that they that they did. Um, so I want to. I'd like to. I like to see. I think I would like to see it. <clears throat> it'll just be very different than the it'll just be very different than the David Suchet um, one that was filmed actually on the on the Su on the Sudan um, so I'll be looking forward to looking forward to that um, and we are actually talking about Rhinebeck I'm hoping 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 things go well and that we go to Rhinebeck I know pretty much everybody in our group is interested in 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 um, in doing it we haven't finalized a place yet but. I mean, I think we are all we're we're all interested in in going again. I mean, I, my sister in law went one for one day um, this past year, but um, for for me and for Sophia, just the the travel time now to go to Rhinebeck is we we need to stay over, and so going for one day really doesn't doesn't make sense for us. So if we went, we'd be renting a house and then going for the two days, get up there on Friday, and then spend Saturday and Sunday uh, at. Um, at, at Rhinebeck. So I, I think it's going to be okay this year. I, I'm, I'm really hopeful that it is. So we're really looking forward. We're really looking forward to, to, um, to that. Um, you know, I'm just really looking forward to getting back out into some nice, some nice weather. I'm just really looking forward to being able to relax a little bit from the craziness that is, um, that is work this year. I just feel like that that's, I, I feel like I don't have anything to talk about because all I've been doing is work is working, and I think that really is, it really is very, very, really is very, 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 very true. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to kind of being able to step back a, a little bit and have some other people take on, take on some of the workload that um, that we have been burdened with um, these past few these past few months. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward. To, it's a beautiful sunny day today. Uh, in mid February, and I'm just um, I'm looking forward to more sun and getting out and uh, getting some oh, just 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 getting out <laughs> and spending some time spending some time uh, outside and and out uh, and out outdoors. So um, I hope all of you are well. Let me know in the um, in the comments what's been happening with you, and uh, hopefully I'll be back um, fairly soon and let you know what my progress is. So thanks thanks for watching.